hear me when um, well in the story of, of Noah he shuts the door they're all going to drown outside but he shuts the door he's not going to share the protection of the ark to the entire population of the area widow's might not the widow's might sorry the um, five virgins that put aside oil in the lamps did not share with the five that did not have the oil and hadn't made provision. They were foolish. These are very hard. These are not sharing of your necessity, you see. If you share of your necessity, you, in effect, um, harm yourself. If you share of your surplus, you do not. There's no harm. And it's just a joy in giving. Do you say, I don't want God to suffer harm through his loving care of us. He gives of his surplus, so he has an infinite surplus, of course, and so forth, but um, it doesn't harm him. And it would be a disaster if it did, because then, of course, we wouldn't have God to love, care, and protect us in the same way. He would be handicapped. I mean, I'm not quite sure if that's reasonable. I mean, he's infinite. There, there is no limit to. But I'm, I'm not sure about that. But something of what I mean there. What I'm impressing upon you is that. No, you don't give of your necessity to the poor. You see, the Christian religion is he gave down his life. That you might have life, but then it's contradicted in a sense in that we find he's resurrected and he's got eternal life. He didn't give away anything of value. He didn't lose his eternal life to you in giving you life. That's the difference. He gave of the petty things that didn't matter to him. The transitory time and the suffering, and perhaps he could avoid the suffering anyway of the presence of mind. Um, I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, he's... In the story, he's an extraordinary being, isn't he? I mean, he's able to do amazing miracles. And he seems incredibly present in his mind on the cross, but then, in fairness, so do the two thieves. Um, not sure about things here at all. But I am clear that the Christian religion is up the creek in that it's uh, he's giving up his life for you, but apparently he's not. He's, he's got eternal life, and, and presumably he knows it. Um, uh, he's not giving up all that he has in the same way as the person in the delusion of a um, person in this world that's in uncertainty, and therefore is possibly giving up everything he has. This is a, a person who knows he has life eternal with his Father in heaven. And this John 17 makes that very clear. So death doesn't mean the same to him as it would mean to someone in uncertainty like, you know, the man in the street. Don't override what God has done for you. He's given you an, an intense self-interest preservation. You have to honor that. And having honored it, what's left? The surplus. Oh, well, oh, wonderful. You, you do it you to help. It'll be a blessing. And you enjoy doing that. Yes, that. Yes, was that all right? Oh, of course. That's lovely. 
do you see that there's a there's responsible giving in, in the sense of as God does I don't want him to die for me that's just terrible but that he gave of his surplus to rescue me well that's just wonderful and I certainly don't want him to harm himself What sort of gratitude would that be if I wanted him to harm himself to do it? Oh, no, no, that, no. Oh, you can't do that. Please don't do that. How can I be happy knowing that you have truly suffered? Am I saying then that the cross was not suffering to Jesus? Well, I, I know he says I thirst. Um... But what does he really mean when he says, I thirst, I, I just long to be with God? I don't know, and I'm not meant to know, it's an uncertainty. But do you get the message? Um, I think uh, uh, the Muslims got it right. You give of yourself, well, I don't know if all Muslims take this view, but the lady I met from um, Africa, North Africa does. You give of your surplus. Well, you can really enjoy giving then, isn't it? It's not hurting you to give of the surplus. You love, uh, you love others more than hanging on to the surplus. Goodness gracious. Mm, bless you. Thank you, Dad. Uh, to say say more on this issue um, uh, again the rich man he's being told well he's very rich you see he's not the ordinary man in the street he's a rich young ruler he's got a lot of wealth and we're saying the essential you know you don't need anything like this surplus um, that's not your necessities of life Give away your surplus. Now he says actually, uh, sell all you have and give to the poor in the scripture. And come and follow me. Well, the come and follow me, of course, is the essential. He's not saying to him, you have to continue giving your life to the worldly responsibilities you've already got. Um, you know, the come and follow me is, uh, well, shouldn't surrender. Um, your um, your life itself, your necessity, um, the um, what's given to you a, a very basic survival self-interest. On the contrary, I want you to come and follow me. I don't want you to die in giving everything away. You know, give your body as well to um, some hungry animal or something, or you know, give away even the food that's necessary to keep you alive. You have a, I was going to say, a right to eat. I would like you to eat as much as I want them to eat, in fact. Obviously. We're not asking you to give up the necessities. We're asking you to give up the things that shouldn't be of too much value to you compared to the necessities to others. You know, do I have the best car so that... Um, you're deprived of the necessities of living. Hmm, doesn't sound quite right, does it? Do I give up my meals so that everyone else can eat? No, that doesn't sound quite right either. Your eating is as important to God as anyone else eating. If we think for a moment of the miraculous powers of Jesus in the story, why wasn't he using these miraculous powers to heal the whole world and to bind up Satan and, and, and so forth? Because that's not God's will. The Father's will, you see, is um, that they come to recognize him as 
Father, Dad. That's what Jesus was sent to do. The healings, the miracles, and so on, were to that end. In other words, in a sense, God wants you to come from the pigsty, not convert the pigsty into a palace. And um, everyone there be healed in, in affluence. Do you see, you have the right to come from the pigsty because you treasure, you value being your father's son. You treasure it all the more now you're in the pigsty because this is not the way your father's son has to live. So you go home. It is this memory, this thought, this remembrance, this realization that allows you to go back home. The others don't value this. They're still valuing the big star, unless they haven't heard. So you tell them they too can go back home. Not be in all happiness and, and fullness where they are, that's a pigsty. The pigsty is meant to be there precisely for people who need to experience the pigsty, like yourself needed to. And that's enough. You now have an abhorrence of the pigsty and you long to go home. Good, good. You value God. That's where you should be then. Welcome home, Haramai. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you, Dad.